2015, my company hosted our largest event. We had a setup that rivaled the Oscars and the Grammys. You know, hundreds of lights, cameras, a 30-foot crane, a live TV editing truck parked outside. In that TV truck was the same person who had just directed the opening ceremonies of the Olympics. We had a team of 139 people, an audience of 8 million with viewers tuning in from 104 countries. I was 19 years old and I was in charge. On the outside, everything looked awesome. I was a so-called success story. A teenager starts a company that becomes a global phenomenon. That's what people were saying. It was crazy on the outside. But there was also another side, a side no one was talking about because I kept it hidden behind my smile. Inside, I was struggling, and nobody knew it. Nobody. What people couldn't see or possibly know was that I was desperately lonely. So lonely that by the time I was 19, I felt physically sick, had no motivation to even get out of bed in the morning. And to add to that was the major wake-up call. Somewhere in the middle of all this emotion and all of my productivity, I was sucker punched by a breakup and a betrayal. The two people in my personal life who I trusted the most turned out to be unhealthy, dishonest, insincere. I had to pull myself away from toxic relationship, from codependence, while at the same time, I was being targeted and slandered. And suddenly I realized I had nobody. Nobody to turn to, no community. Hundreds of Facebook friends, sure, thousands of fans and followers, but I felt desperately lonely. And scrolling on Facebook or Instagram just made me feel even worse. I had started this, this global movement, connecting millions of people, and now I felt completely disconnected, completely isolated, completely alone, abandoned by the people I thought had my back, betrayed by those that I trusted the most. So I left. I, I ran away as far as I could. I bought a backpack and a plane ticket out of the country. I was just looking to escape, honestly. I had no idea what was going to happen. I had no idea that that plane ticket would lead me through 20 countries and change me forever. It was New Year's Eve on the day I arrived in Vietnam. I was staying in the heart of Ho Chi Minh City, and a few blocks away in the main square, thousands of people would be gathering to celebrate. Just picture Times Square in New York, except slightly smaller. So I walked over to the square, navigated through the crowds to find a spot where I could see the stage, and there was this small group of people in their 20s, maybe 30s, laughing and talking next to me. And I didn't need to speak Vietnamese to know they had started talking to each other about me. So here I am in this foreign country, other side of the world, and all I'm thinking is, seriously, fans here, really? I can't get away. Next thing I know, someone taps me on my shoulder. So here we go, it's the tap I know all too well. They're gonna want an autograph, a, a selfie, a picture with me. So I turn to my right, getting ready to put on my show face, and the person who tapped me on the shoulder was this woman, wearing this bright red dress and matching lipstick. And she didn't ask me for an autograph, or a selfie, she just asked if I was alone. So I nodded yes, and then she smiled at me and shook her head no. She reached out her hand and invited me to join the group. And I felt like an idiot. I was so embarrassed for where my head had gone. And at the same time, I also felt this overwhelming sense of relief, but not just relief. I was moved by this invitation to be included just because I was alone, not because I was recognized, not because of anything I had done, not because of who I was. What was so powerful about it was that these people wanted nothing from me except to include me in their community. Even though we didn't speak the same language, they invited me in to experience New Year's with them. And we had an amazing time. We laughed and danced and ate for hours together. Had I not taken her hand to join them, I would have still experienced New Year's in Vietnam. But I wouldn't have felt connected to the experience like I did. Community is built through real life human connection. That's what I was missing. When I took that stranger's hand, when I said yes to celebrating with a group, it became a plus one experience. 
and life is meant to be a plus one experience. It's kind of like the difference between reading a great novel versus being in a book club. Or the difference between watching each of the eight installments of the Harry Potter franchise on your own versus lining up at the theater for the midnight premiere, dressed in costumes. It's why we'll spend hundreds of dollars on a ticket to see Bruce Springsteen live. Because it's better than listening to him on Spotify in your car. We crave shared experiences with other people in real life. The eye contact, partying together, movement, laughter, it's all universal. For as long as I can remember, my life had been about getting busy, being productive, being impressive. Here, I was just me. Someone nobody knew. I was fully present and it was awesome because I was connecting with others. That first plane ticket turned into a journey through 20 countries and this accidental discovery of some of the truths about community. How they start, what makes them tick, how people engage, the power of meaningful connection. I've now immersed myself in all different types of communities around the world, celebrating New Year's in Vietnam with locals, living in a remote village in West Africa, meditating in an Arab settlement in Israel, cheering on a soccer match in Mexico. Every chapter of my travels was rich with human interaction. That's what shaped and elevated the experience. It was never the meal or the trek or the event. It was always the people I was sharing it with, even if we had only just met. You know, back in the day, business used to be built on a handshake, not a Google Hangout. Parenting was about story time, not screen time. We used to know our neighbors. Now, sometimes we don't even know the person's name who sits right next to us at the office. We're living in this digital age, sure. You know, this age of disruption, as everyone keeps saying. But business is still about people. Business is still built on relationships. Life is still meant to be a plus one experience. Not just online, but offline. When we connect with one another, really connect, we thrive. Productivity increases, wellness increases, joy increases at work and at home. And we can each invite a vibrant sense of community back into our lives by looking up from our devices a little more often listening a little deeper, sharing a little more, and being a little more present.